Thank you for the introduction. So, um, yeah, my name is Maxime Corday. I'm a research fellow at Monash University, and today I'll present our work with uh, our immersive analytics toolkit um, that I mainly developed with uh, Andrew Cunningham from UniSA and in collaboration with uh, Tien Dwyer and Kim Marriott from Monash University, Bruce Thomas also from Univers University of South Australia, Christoph uh, Herter from the French Civil Aviation School, and uh, Benjamin Back from the University of uh, Edinburgh. So IATK is a data visualization toolkit actually available through the, the, the editor. So simply by using the same type of interaction, we can create uh, a lot of different types of visualization and easily also recreate this kind of sort of big data set visualization that we used in Fiberplay just by using drag and drops interactions. So uh, we also simplified the offering by providing an API to provide a bit more freedoms to, uh, to more advanced programmers, for example, and it's, it uses a very uh, traditional uh, factory builder pattern where we simply uh, first uh, uh, create a, a, a constructor in which we design the geometry of our visualization. Then we can chain commands to this, uh, this uh, constructor to bind data dimensions to, uh, to, to data, uh, data dimensions to axis of the view frame, and then we can set uh, all the uh, remaining aesthetics, such as colors and size. And at runtime, the visualization, uh, the, the uh, Unity will display uh, the, your, your, your data binding. So uh, the third concept uh, was to uh, actually uh, interaction uh, and interaction that are specific to the domain of uh, data visualization, directly available for visualization researchers and visualization designers. And those interactions uh, contain details on demand. So details on demand in, in data viz, it's, it's very important. It basically consists of like, okay, I've seen an interesting data point. I want to know which are the values of this. Uh, the next one is filtering. So we implemented all sorts of filtering. So the probably the most is being able to filter data dimensions by redefining the, the range of the distribution of each data dimension. And final one is to be able to uh, handle uh, brushing and linking. And so br briefly as well, brushing and linking also heavily used in multidimensional data visualization. It allows a user to basically uh, specify or select a, a region uh, in a, in a specific, uh, sorry, get data points in a, in a data visualization and eliminates them in corresponding visualizations. So these interactions, um, so it makes it uh, makes IATK kind of unique because it works with relatively large data sets. Which brings me to the last point. And so the fourth, uh, the fourth uh, design requirements uh, of uh, IATK is its uh, scalability. So IATK actually handles relatively large data sets up to the order of a few million data points. And in order to, uh, to achieve this performance, we actually use the Unity mesh structure that we turn into a uh, mesh-driven data structure. And uh, actually, we developed, uh, so these, these points and, and lines and everything, they are not like directly available into Unity. We actually rewrote like a graphic library um, uh, with uh, the Unity shaders, and we also wrote compute shader to handle the complexity of selecting millions of data points at a usable frame rate in VR. So we ran a, we ran a test uh, with a simple 3D scatterplot visualization, and uh, yeah, we figured out that up to a few, um, uh, from one million to two, three million data points, it runs at, at a usable frame rate uh, on a VRPC, on a state-of-the-art VRPC. So um, I'll just go very quickly because I don't have much time left. Um, I'm just gonna show a few use case examples where it's interesting to use IATK. Uh, so one interesting uh, immersive analytics use case um, is the visualization of multivariate data um, in virtual reality because we actually can use the space around the user to create a lot of uh, visualizations corresponding to the multiple fac facets that a multidimensional data set can have. So as a visualization researcher, this is kind of interesting to explore this type of systems. So basically with AATK, we can actually build this type of interactive VR dashboard without writing a single line of code. So we just open the editor, we create the high level visualizations such as the scatplot matrix and the three scatplot. We can use the brushing and leaking components that is also have available at a high level. And when we press play and we put the headset on, we are already in a virtual reality uh, immersive analytics system that we designed with uh, not much effort. So this is a, uh, in a pretty similar way, we can use IATK to explore immersive augmented reality data visualization. So this is a, another super compelling 
example of using uh, immersion for to create an augmented desktop. So here we just switched the SDK to the, uh, the Meta2 SDK. So it's pretty much the same components. We created an augmented reality map that we displayed on the, on the side of the, the user. And, um, and yeah, just by simply changing the tracked inputs and putting the hands instead of the controllers, uh, we can also leverage brushing and linking uh, relatively large data sets. Um, finally, uh, the IATK programming interface can be used to explore new styles of uh, interactions with data. So in this example here, uh, we created with a few lines of code using our API and interactions, new interactions to facet data. So um, faceting visualization is very useful as well in, 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 in data viz uh, and is done often by data viz pr practitioners when data con contain categor categorical information. So we can, uh, by leveraging the Unity um, uh, environment, environment and, um, and uh, capacities, we can create uh, this type of interesting emerging interactions. So I'll just uh, conclude briefly. IATK is uh, an expressive and scalable uh, data viz uh, toolkit for um, immersive analytics. It simplifies the uh, authoring process uh, to create simple dashboards or more advanced visualizations in AR and VR. And it can be basically seen as an immersive analytics enabler. <coughs> so in the direct perspective, what we intend to do is have a richer grammar of graphics to be able to be even more expressive and handle more uh, um, data formats and input. Uh, we also want to refine the user interface that is available into the Unity editor. And uh, also, this is very important, we really want to turn it in, into a more automated an analytics toolkit uh, that will contain, like, for example, regressions and, and clustering algorithms when creating visualizations, for example. So thank you very much for your attention. The toolkit is available uh, on GitHub, so you can Go and download it if you want to do immersive analytics research. And thank you for your attention. Thank you, Maxime, for this beautiful presentation. Uh, we are open for three minutes of question and answer. Please uh, uh, come to the microphone to, to, to ask questions. It's a great toolkit. <laughs> so I can break uh, the ice, we say in Italian like this, I don't know. If. Well, um, it was very interesting because, um, yes, w this visualization in virtual reality is a kind uh, of uh, old technology, but with new tools like Oculus and uh, the new HMDs that are coming out, it will be more and more and more interesting for the, for the work, for the work of the future. Uh, my question is, um, do you have uh, experimented th this platform with uh, engineers or uh, and and users, and how they react to, to this kind of tools? Yeah. So this is a, a very good question. Thank you very much. So um, I, when I just started the presentation, I showed the uh, IMAX's tool uh, that that we have developed basically like with the Proto toolkit to create this like authoring system in virtual reality, and we are currently like uh, collaborating with a university uh, in the US and the Department of Economics to, uh, to actually um, evaluate that tool with actual end users that are statisticians. So yes, we, we are acti actually actively um, uh, benchmarking these tools with, with users and see how they receive it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So there is other questions from the audience? Yes, please. Okay, go. I am Dan Key from University of Minnesota. Um, I feel like I've worked for many years to try to convince people in the InfoViz community, especially, that VR has has you know potential for visualization. It's a lot easier in the SciViz community because you've got the spatial dimension. So I'm interested in like. What, I mean, from your standpoint, like, what has changed? You know, if you listen to, like, Tamara and Munzner's guidelines, yeah. no unjustified 3D. I mean, <laughs> it's like, so uh, what, what has changed now that sort of, like, where, where immersive analytics becomes more practical, right? And this would have been really hard to publish 10 years ago, five years ago, even. Yeah, definitely. So, so on that note, uh, actually, uh, we, uh, with my co-authors in the room here, we, we actually managed to publish some stuff in, at InfoViz. 
and actual at the info of his track and for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> believe, believe it or not um, but um, uh, yeah so I think what uh, and, and also there is an immersive analytics track now at info of his so there are there are paper about right. VR abstract visualization yeah. uh, which is good sign uh, so maybe um, I probably don't know the accurate answer to that but it seems that the technology the, the leap in technology is is an almost like I mean like the, the jump like from from I of usability in the of virtual reality headsets and the ease of access like because they're pretty cheap to buy for in for universities and stuff like this probably like fuel more research mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we actually uh, actually uh, Tamara Munzner tried IMAXs and and she said it, she, she said it was great so we wow <laughs> we, were, <laughs> we were very happy but yeah, she yeah. will be yeah but anyway, um, so it's probably uh, it's probably like both a technological uh, because the technology is advancing very fast and, and it's now usable for info these people and the resolution is getting better as well. Okay. I think uh, Thank I you. think uh, we are we are finished for the question time. So we have another presenter from uh, also from Australia from University of, so of South Australia. We have uh, uh, almost three Australian here, so it's pretty good. And if we are here, we really believe that virtual reality will be the interface of the future, so engineers and we'll, we'll use this kind of tools anyway. So.